Hi, this is Jamel Hamka with Recherche Cabs in Statesville, North Carolina. This is a very special video because we have two recent graduates of our canine college program. We get emails all the time on what does a typical 16-week-old graduate looks like. Well, we have two boys uh, that just graduated canine college, and we want to go ahead and show off some of their training so you can kind of see. Now, canine college uh, begins at the end of Puppy Academy, so it's 12 weeks of age and it ends at 16 weeks of age. It's an extra 100 hours of training, so total amount of training from six weeks to 16 weeks is 350 hours of training. Now, Canine College is the program that I recommend to start with at the most. Now, a lot of people do Puppy Academy, but the problem with Puppy Academy is the puppies are not fully inoculated, their potty training isn't nearly as good, and their obedience training isn't nearly as good. So we highly, highly recommend our clients keep their puppy in training to at least right now um, and the more they're in training, the better they will do in training. Now, we want to show off some, and let me just give you some examples, uh, some things, uh, goals that are different. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned before, by the time they're 16 weeks of age, they have all of their shots. They have their rabies. They have their final puppy shot. They have their, uh, their Bordetella or kennel cough shots, and so they are fully vaccinated. Uh, the advantage of keeping them later is that we can now start really doing a lot of field trips. We do field trips but we were very careful in the first 16 weeks of life because we didn't want to get them introduced to any other dog poop or anything that could possibly give them parvo distemper. So they have received their last shots. They are fully inoculated now. And so when you take them home, you don't have to worry about quarantining them. You don't have to worry about keeping them only in your home. You can take them to dog parks. You can take them to uh, walking around the block. You don't have to worry about that um, in that training program. With our potty training, our goal is for them to hold the restroom for two hours during the day, which is twice as long as Puppy Academy. That may not seem like a lot, but that's a big difference. They really grow in their potty training. Now, they don't have it as good as master's program or doggy doctorate. When they get older, as we're going to discuss later on, um, they will start giving us signals that they need to go outside. Right now, they're doing good. They're holding it for about two hours during the day. Now, crate training. That is a weakness of Cavaliers, Cavapoos, Cavachons. Um, they love to be with us, but they're a lot better now. I mean, probably three times better now uh, at the crate training than they were just a little while ago. Um, they're able to stay in the crate. They still are very dependent and don't like to be crated, but they can hold it right now for around six to seven hours at night. They're not a full eight to 10 hours at night, which is the next program. Uh, so if you get a good eight hours of sleep, you may have to wake up in the middle of the night to potty them but they typically can hold the rest around six to seven hours at, sl at sleep. The stay command that we're going to show you at this age is to do 10 seconds, to hold it uh, for 10 seconds at a distance of 10 feet, which is twice as long as Puppy Academy. So they have their stay command. Uh, their obedience commands are much better now because the light ball moment, uh, which, was, which typically happens around 10 weeks of age, is the moment when a puppy realizes they need to do something to get something. It's an amazing time because one minute, Everything is tricking them. We're luring them into a sit. We're luring them into a down. We're luring them into a stay. And then all of a sudden, one day, they wake up, and a light bulb hits, and then they're like, wait a second. You want me to do something to get something. And that typically happens around 10 weeks of age. And so at 12 weeks of age, they have their commands, but they can easily lose them. Those last four weeks of training, these last four weeks of training, we really start working on them to master their commands. Now, they don't have them fully mastered. They can lose their commands, but they know their commands two to three times better now than they did four weeks ago. And the longer they're in training, the better and better and better they will get. The other thing that's really nice about these puppies is their jump training. Uh, Cavaliers, Cavapoos, are, they love to jump up. And uh, at 12 weeks of age, we, we tell them off and we push them kind of down and, and, and give them. At this age, uh, they typically know the word off. So when they jump up, we say the word off and they jump down. Now, as they get older in training, we train them not to jump up in the beginning, but that usually doesn't happen until master's program and doggy doctorate. But at this age, at the very least, they know the word off. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be jumping up um, on everybody, anybody, all the time, and you don't want that in a puppy. Um, and, and so you have to start it out young. Now, this boy's name is Liam. He is a, uh, we have Liam and Scooter. We're going to have um, uh, Kara. She's one of our professional trainers. And I think Nikki is her trainer, is this dog's trainer. So this is a new trainer. Nikki is sick today, and uh, but uh, so he's not used to working with her. So he's not going to do as good, but that's okay. This will kind of let you know what he's going to act like with a new person. I don't know if you've ever trained these puppies, really. And so, uh, but as you can see, he loves everybody. 
they're very dependent. That is typically the Cavaliers and Cavapoos, Cavachons. That's just what they are. Now, we're going to show you them in obedience training. We train them to walk on the leash. They train them to walk on the left side. And so we're, they're able to walk without pulling, without tugging, without cutting in front. We also train them to do something called an auto sit, which basically is when we stop walking, they automatically sit. Notice how focused he is. He knows the routine. He still does the little bit of the pawing, which is an immature thing. As they get older, they will stop that. See how he paws for the treat? That's, that's typical of a young puppy. Um, we're going to be training him not to do that as he gets older. Now we're going to show you with hand and words the sit and down. And that's it. And then down is a point to the ground. Now our goal is for them to hold this for 10 seconds at a distance of 10 feet. That's about 10 feet. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And if you could tell, that took all the patience he had. And that's because at this age, they're basically like a 9-year-old. Uh, 12 weeks old, they're like a four-year-old, and so they can't do that. So now we're going to do a thing with just hand, words. She just says words, no hands. <laughs> now what he just did there was offer up a behavior. He actually went yeah. down because he knew that he was going to say that. Down. No hands, just words. Okay. Good boy. So cute. Now we're going to do everything with just hand signals, no words. Um, he's confused. He's looking for that treat. Five, four, three, two, one. And as you can tell, 10 seconds is like an eternity for these puppies. If you want them to hold it a lot longer, then keep them in training for longer. Now we're going to do place. We say the word place, and they jump up on the Karanda cot. We encourage you to buy one of these because he knows it, and he can sit. He can lay. He just has to stay. It's another way of teaching stay. It's actually easier for them because it's elevated. It's easier. It's a visible reminder. Uh, it just helps them quite a bit. Um, he's also used to this, so it's really good to have one of these in the room. He will actually hold the stay longer on a place command. Uh, in, in a, on a Krondicot than he would on the ground. Okay. And you can see his cum is very good. And the last thing we'll show you is kennel. We say the word kennel and they go into the crate. And I will tell you the difference between now and what they were just four weeks ago is dramatic. Um, they're not vocal anymore. They used to be extremely vocal. Um, now they're not as vocal. They still don't love the crate, but they will go in the crate and be quiet, which is a miracle in and of itself because Cavaliers love, love, love people. And then they cannot walk out until we release them. There it is. So that is Liam. Now we have a tricolor boy, actually his brother. This is Scooter. Now one thing if you'll notice is um, at this age they start losing their puppy coat. He's lost his puppy coat. He is starting to lose his puppy coat. And, uh, and so they kind of go through this awkward period, um, which is typically 16 to 20 weeks old. That's when they kind of look like him, where he's kind of long, lanky, narrow. It's kind of the teenage phase. This is normal uh, for a puppy. And he just has his puppy coat still, so he's thicker, a um, little bit more. It's kind of half there, half gone. And uh, so we're going to go, and I'm going to take Liam, and he's going to show the same thing to, to Scooter. Now we're going to show you him walking on a leash on the left side. We want to show two puppies so you can see that we didn't just pick the smartest puppy. We picked a normal puppy. And uh, they're just the two puppies we have right now that are 16 weeks old. Scooter is a little bit more energetic, a little bit more needy. He's very vocal. And as you notice, it is typical of puppies this age to kind of use their paws to take the treat. As they get older, we will train them not to do that, but that is typical of a 16-week-old. And he does the auto sit just like his brother when he stopped walking. Auto sit. Now we're going to do hand and words. Good. Ah. Now. Good. 
Now the stay, again, is very difficult. It's more difficult for him because he's more dependent. The more dependent they are, the harder stay is. We also use that lead as a communication tool. If you pop the lead, it lets them know he did something bad. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Scooter! Now again, this is with a new trainer. Uh, he can do this even better with Nikki because he's used to her. And so him doing this with her, let me go ahead and hold Liam. Six, one. Ah. Now what he did was he offered up a behavior. I'm holding Liam here, and he's seeing the training, and he's getting very much he wants to get into training. Okay. Now we're going to do uh, with just words, I believe. Just hand signals, sorry. <laughs> good. Good. Very good. Now, what they do at this age is they start learning routines, and so they start just offering up behaviors, which is typical. And so that's why we start, we'll start switching it around as they get older, because we don't want them just to memorize a routine. We want them to actually know the word, the hand signals. And as you can see, they're not perfect at this age, which is why we continue on training them through the master's program, because they get more and more mature. Now we're going to show you the place command with him, with Scooter. I love the name Scooter, by the way. It's a per great name for a Cavalier. Good. And the last thing we'll show you is kennel. Go in there with kennel. Good. kennel. And he actually is more dependent than his brother, so he has a harder time with crate than his brother. So he's a little bit vocal. So as you can see, they're doing great in training. They're not perfect, which is why we encourage you to keep them in training till longer. But at least you got to see what two typical graduates of our canine college program. This is 350 hours of training. Now that was just the obedience spots, a uh, little bit of the kenneling and walking on a leash. There's a lot more to it. We can't really show you them potty training. We can't really, we can show their personality and how loving they are and, and all those things. But you know, you can't really show them walking up and down stairs. That's all part of the training program. I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you uh, learned what our training program is all about. Thank you for your time, and God bless. Hi, I'm Nicole with the Sure Shake Cabs, and I'm here with Trixie's Miss Pink Maddie. I'm going to give you her final video. The first thing is I'm going to scan her for her microchip. It's located on her shoulders. Um, now, we microchip all the puppies for identification reasons. With her, it was easy, the only female in the litter. But this is also for safety reasons. You're going to get a copy of this in her puppy pack. And that's going to have her number plus instructions on how to register her information. You can do that by phone or by a website. Um, and so, there you go, babe. Um, and so, we do recommend doing that within the first day or two of getting her just in case. Now, the next thing is going to be the emails. You're going to be receiving a lot of emails. You've already received a lot. Read through those. There's a lot of emails that will have one subject in the beginning, and that's... Usually it might even look like that's all there is, but you get further down a uh, place. You get further down the email and there's another subject. So I do recommend skimming, at least skim through the emails and make sure you get all the topics covered. Um, one of the most important emails though you want to focus on for the beginning is going to the, be the potty training emails. 
Um, she needs to know what door to go to to signal to you. Most of the puppies will signal by simply walking over to the door and looking at you or sitting at the door and just kind of looking at you. Um, that's the typical signal. Most, um, that's most puppies, but every puppy does have a little bit different, so pay attention to what her signal is. If she goes near the door and cries, if she goes near the door and sits, if she goes to the door and walks away and goes to the door and walks away, she might need to go potty. Any little thing could be a signal, so pay attention to that. She is a small dog. Small dogs tend to have to go out more often than larger dogs, so be aware of that as well. The other thing to remember is she is going to be new in your home. She knows what's expected here. She doesn't know what's expected in your home, and so you need to assume she's doing worse than what we tell you she's doing because any new place is going to be more difficult for her to know what she's supposed to do. Bring her to the same door every time you bring her out to go potty. The other thing is give her a small space. Give her a five by five area. It couldn't be smaller because she's a small dog. Um, give her a small, very specific place for her to go potty. That will help her know where she's supposed to go. And if she's a very particular place, then that's going to tell her she's not supposed to go anywhere else, and that will help a potty training as well. Again, remember, she's a smaller dog, and they tend to have to go out more often. So be on top of that. If you can't watch her, you can't be watching her to make sure she's not going potty, she either needs to be where she's allowed to go potty or in a kennel. And the proper size kennel to go along with the potty training is going to be where she can fit in it comfortably, but if she makes a mess, she has to be in that mess. She has to be stepping in it. It sounds gross. She's going to have to get a bath if that happens, but that will teach her to hold it. She doesn't want to go to the bathroom and have to be in it, and so she'll learn very quickly to hold it in the kennel. Um, now, we do recommend three to five days of letting her bond to you, bond to the family, ah, uh -uh, place. Um, and then also getting used to the house and the yard. She does not need to go for a walk during this time, and she does not need to meet a lot of people. It's hard with a new puppy. Everybody wants to meet the new puppy. It's exciting. She's adorable. Um, but you need to let her bond to her immediate family and anybody in the house who she's going to be with for an extended period of time or to see on a daily basis. Ah, uh ah, -uh, good girl. Um, so three to five days before you have a bunch of people come over. And when you do it, uh -uh, when you do in, um, introduce her to people, don't have it be a ton of people all at once. That can be overwhelming, especially because she's so little. She's a lot of people going over her like this and, oh, she's so cute and everybody's excited. That can be a little overwhelming for a small puppy. So be aware of that. Have only a few people at a time. Keep it calm. Keep it quiet and give her a few days to bond to her new family before you invite a whole bunch of people over. The same thing goes for going for a walk. She doesn't need to go for a walk. She needs to learn her home and her yard. Walk her around the house, walk her around the yard. She doesn't need to go for a walk for the first few days. Um, along with that, 10 to 14 days is what we recommend before you do any strict obedience training. She's not going to forget her training, but she needs to bond and get used to everything and understand what's going on and so you don't need to do any training with her for the first 10 to 14 days some puppies acclimate very quickly and if she's happy and bouncing around and there's nothing scary um, then you can start doing training but I do re recommend try and wait 10 to 14 days that will help her out as well again she's not going to lose her training the exceptions to that is don't let her jump she's a small dog they tend to be jumpy she's not that bad she understands off she understands she needs to sit for anything so if you're going to give her treats or affection um, or f when you feed her, ask her to sit first. Ask her to sit before you go outside, before you open that door. Have her sit first. That will teach her basic manners. Um, she's used to doing these things. She's really good about that, but in excitement, she may jump. She jumps on a door or a gate or a person. You tell her off. Down is for lying down. Off is for jumping. If there's a leash on her, you can give her a down into the side correction. It's just a pop and release. Yeah, it's usually two or three in a row, a pop, pop, pop. But that's a down correction. It's the same for off. If there's no leash on her and she jumps on a person, you can step into her. You can step away from her. You can turn your body and get her so she falls off of you. Try not to use your hands. If you use your hands, it's a positive thing because your hands mean food and affection and love. So if you use your hands to push her off, she may jump right back up again. If she jumps on a gate or a door, tell her off. If she doesn't, put a leash on her if there's not one already on her and give her that correction. If you don't have access to a leash, you tell her off, she doesn't do it, then use your body to push her off. We're, she's a little thing. You're big enough. Just simply slide her off using your leg or your foot. That will help get her down. As soon as all four feet are on the ground, praise her. Now, we use hot dogs for training. Place. Ah, ah. Place. Ah. Good. Now, we use hot dogs for training. This one will break in half because it's a little bit big. 
But we use small, soft treats. She's a small dog. She's going to fill up quickly. And so I recommend very small, soft treats. You want to use soft treats because it's easier for her to eat quickly. They tend to be stinkier, and the stinkier they are, the more she's going to follow them. There you go. Um, and again, you want small treats because you want her to eat them quickly, and also you don't want to fill her up. She's going to get full very, very quickly. And so use small, soft treats. Um, if you use hard or crunchy treats, she's going to be looking for crumbs. She's going to be focused on eating and not focused on you. Now we have three transfer tools. Good girl. Place. Uh -uh. We have three transfer tools for you. We have the verbal command. We have the hand signal. She knows them separately. Down is the only one that she's not perfect with with the verbal. Um, but she does know all the hand signals by themselves. She knows almost all the verbal perfectly by themselves. But I recommend you use those together every time you give her a command, especially in the first month or two of training with her. The last training tool we give you is a leash. You're going to get one very similar to this. It has a handle on one side. It has a metal ring on the other. You simply put the handle through the ring, and it creates a loop. This loop goes over her head. Good girl. You're going to put it up under her chin and up behind her ears. The higher up on her neck it goes, the closer right up against her skull it is, the better reaction you're going to get with the leash. Now, it may slip down. That's okay. And she can wear her flat collar while using this leash. The flat collar will simply sit lower on her neck. Um, now, I do recommend for training that you use this leash because she knows this leash. When you pull on it, it tightens up. When you relax, when you give it slack, it will loosen up. It's a slip lead. This is what she knows for training. I recommend using this for walking and for the obedience, especially in the very beginning. And once you get her where she's near perfect on a walk, then you can transfer her to the flat collar and a flat leash or a regular leash. If she starts pulling, I recommend go back to this immediately. That will help her to not develop that habit of pulling. Now, we have corrections for you. We have leash corrections as part of the training, but we also use a verbal correction. You may have already heard me say it. I go, uh-uh, eh, 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 something along those lines. It's whatever naturally comes out of you is going to work. You can do it as a reminder. It's, uh-uh, if she's thinking about jumping off a place, I'll go, uh-uh, she'll stop, usually. Um, if she doesn't, it's a firmer, uh-uh, or eh, eh, or eh, or eh, whatever works for you. But don't use the word no. It's overused in human conversation. Good girl. She's ready to work. Good girl. Let's go. Let's go. Good. So let's go is what you tell her when you want her to walk with you. She needs to stay on your left. Good girl. And she needs to stay close. You don't want her too close because she's little. Good girl. And I don't want to step on her. Good girl. The other thing is if I stop walking, she needs to sit. And ideally, she sits next to me, not in front of me. Now, at her age, she, for the most part, she does sit next to me. Sometimes she'll scoot forward. That's part of the breed. They want to get as closest to you as you can. And it's also her age. I don't expect her to be perfect right next to me every time. She may sit in front of me because a lot of times when you ask them sit, they're directly in front of you. And so that's where they get the confusion. Good girl. Good. Now, if she pulls, right now she's doing really good. She loves treats, so I do recommend walking with treats at least the first couple times. That way you can treat her when she sits for the auto sit. Good girl. And it also helps keep her focused. Notice she's looking at me. She's watching me. Good girl, because she knows I have treats, and that's what she wants. She loves working for food. Good. you got to sit up. And she needs to stay in a sit. Just because I give her a treat for sitting doesn't mean she gets up and does her own thing right away. If I stop walking, she's still in the command of let's go. If she pulls, there's a couple different things you can do. You can use the auto sit. Walk a few steps and stop. Good girl. Let's go. Walk a few more steps and stop. Good. She's going to wonder, what am I doing? And it helps her refocus. She doesn't need this correction, in a sense, because she's so good. She's actually offering down because she thinks I want something different. Good girl. Good girl. The other thing you can do is if she's not paying attention, you can turn directions quickly. Good. Walk a few steps and then turn back in the original direction. You may have to do this a couple times. The other thing is if she's, instead of pulling frontwards, if she's pulling off to my side, ah, uh -uh, over, over here, good. If she's pulling off to the side, I'm not going to turn around because she's still going to be pulling that way. I'm going to turn in the opposite direction that she's pulling. I know. There you go. Good girl. Sit quiet. Ah, uh -uh. good. Notice that a little pop on the leash because she stood up to move in front of me. I want her to stay sitting on my side. The last correction that we use is this leash. You give a little pop if she's pulling. If she's pulling in front, I'm going to pop her towards my body, so it'll be a backwards pop. If she's off too far on the side, I'll pop her to my body, so it's going to be towards the right. Good girl. It's going to be the opposite direction that she is. Now, usually she's really good. Probably the biggest correction she gets on the leash is I'll pop it away from me because she's too close to my feet. The other thing you can do is when you're walking, let's go. 
is you can do a little bit of stomping your feet. That will help her back off. Notice she, she had a little hesitation there. It got a little scary for her. She backed away from my foot a little bit. And then I stopped stomping because she was doing that. And that's good because she's a little dog. You don't want her underfoot. Um, she likes to go sometimes between my legs when I'm walking. If she starts lagging behind, she'll rush up and she'll go between my legs. I use the leash. I pull her back around. She has to be on my lap. Because she's little and I don't want trip, you don't want to be tripping on her, I do recommend practicing that, really focusing on that. She's not too close, but again, you don't want her too far away. Good girl. If you notice, I only give her about half a leash. She only needs enough leash that she is comfortable. It's slack and she's next to me. If she leaves this area, if she gets too far away, it's going to get tight. So she only gets about half a leash. As she grows, she'll get a little bigger, a little taller, so she'll need less and less leash. She only needs enough to be comfortable where she is. As soon as she moves from this spot, it should be tight. That way you just need a flick of your wrist to give her that proper correction. If you let her stay, if you let her get to the end of the leash and she's pulling and your arm is straight out, it's very hard because there's no slack in that line. It's very hard to give her that correction. So if you give her a little bit and you end up doing this, you have this much more leash that you can give her that correction if you need to. You're so good, you're so good. All right, let's go, good. Good. So for sit, it's simply the word sit. The hand signal is up over her head. Because she's little, I usually don't, uh, uh, uh. Because she's little, I don't usually go to my shoulder, but you can. You can go up over her head, you can come straight up, or you can come up here. If she does not sit, or she breaks a sit stay, it's a pop straight up over her head. Good girl. Good girl. Down. Good girl. Down, it's the word down, like I showed you there. She did do it. Stay. Good. A little bit of body language, simply bending over at the waist, good girl, can help her go into a down. If you tell her sit and you bend over, she's probably going to lie down. That simple body language, she's going to follow your body language before she follows your voice. That's why I also recommend using your commands, your verbal and your hand signal together so she learns exactly what you mean. Stay. The hand signal for down is simply a point to the ground, good girl. Stay is just a flat palm to her. Good. You can do fingers up or fingers down. I tend to do fingers up, but it doesn't really matter. It's just your flat palm to her. She understands that. The word is stay. This is one command that if you can use the verbal and the hand signals together, I recommend you do it, even if she's five years old. Stay is sometimes difficult for dogs to do. This breed in general, they love to be with you. So her staying is difficult because she just wants to be with me. Good girl. If she wants to, ah, uh -uh, down. Good. She stood, she sat up, so I had to make sure she went down before she got her treat. Good. And be aware of that. If you tell her stay, you walk away, good girl, you come back to her, uh-uh. Good. Just because I approach her does not mean she gets up. Uh-uh, stay. Good. She can't get up unless I give her a release. There's two different words, technically three, that you could give her. I could pick up her leash and then tell her let's go. I could tell her come, or I could tell her okay. Good girl. So okay is her release word. That means she's done doing whatever I asked her to do. Now, if she was to break a stay, let's say I put her, sit, good, stay, uh-uh, uh-uh, stay, good. I put her in a stay, uh-uh. I'm going to do something to get her to break it so I can show you the correction. Hey, uh-uh. So you give her a verbal command. I want to be gentle because I kind of made her sit, good. Bring her back where she was, tell her the command to sit with the pop up. If she was in a down, I'm gonna bring her back where she was and tell her down with the correction at the same time. Stay. You re give the stay command and you get her to do it. Now, if it was something as simple as distance was hard for her, let's say I'm only this far away, she can handle it. I take one more step back and she just can't handle it that day or that training session. Then, when you ask her to stay, you want her to succeed. She broke the command, she did it two or three times in a row. So instead of going back, 10 feet because she can't handle it that day. Only do five feet and then, okay, now she did that command. Good girl. Now she can do quite a while, but I've been practicing with her. She knows me, she knows what's expected. I can do 30 feet with her for 30 seconds. That is not her goal. Her goal, I believe, for her age is 10 feet for 10 seconds. Um, so she is surpassing her goal like crazy, but when you first start working with her, you need to start small. Start simply on the leash, stay. Go to the end of the leash, good girl, come back. Uh -uh. Down, make sure she holds that position. Good, ah, good girl. And then treat her, okay. 
and then you're done. And you can do that two or three times in a row. And then you can make it longer. Ask her stay, drop the leash, and walk two steps away from the leash. And then release her. Go back to her and then release her. If you mix it up, that will help her. Like I said, she does really good. She's a very smart girl. But you need to start slowly. Let's go. Now, it's going to be the same thing with come. You want to start with this leash. Come. Good. Get her in front of you. Ah, you got to sit. Good girl. Get her in front of you. Walk backwards quickly. Tell her come. You have the leash. If she doesn't come, then you can come. You can pull her to you. Good girl. Good girl. What you want to do is you want to start with this leash. Then you can go on to the flat collar with like a six foot leash. You can eventually go to about a 20 foot leash. You can get those at pet stores. Even Walmart sells a long rope. You can put a clip that would hook onto her collar. You can use that. If you can't make her come to you, especially in that first year, if you say come and she can disobey that command, you don't have a leash on her, you can't make her physically come to you by pulling her to you. Don't say the word come. Just say her name, Maddie. Good girl. She responds to that, good girl. If you clap your hands, like I did to get her to break stay so I could show you how to correct that. Um, if you clap your hands, if you clap your leg, um, make funny noises. Kissy noises is what I usually end up doing, and that works really well. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Good girl. Um, anything to get her attention. If there's a squeaky toy or a toy that makes funny noises, they have ducks that quack and things like that. If she loves that, if that gets her ears to perk up, use that toy to get her to come. Practice come. Have more than one person where you have two or more people and you're at other ends of the room or just a little bit away from each other, one person tells her come, she comes to them, she gets a treat, good girl, she has to sit for come. Um, and then she gets her treat, good girl, the next person now calls her, she goes to them, she gets a treat from them, she gets affection from them. Then you space it out more, you go on opposite ends of the room, eventually other rooms and then across the house. Practice it outside, start small again, even if she's doing across the house, really, really well, when you go outside, practice it in a smaller space and then slowly make that bigger and bigger. There's a lot more distractions outside. Um, so practice come. You can even play hide and go seek. You know she's gone potty. She just went potty. She's fine. Have her in the room. She's doing her own thing. Go, go around the wall, go around the corner from her, and then get her to come to you. But don't say the word come unless you have a leash on her and you can make her come. Just make funny noises. Notice kissy noise, walking away from her. She was looking at me. I backed away. She came right to me. Come here. I want to show that you know that one. Good girl. Um, just anything to get her attention and then praise her the whole time she's coming to you. Ah, uh -uh. good girl. Place. Good. So place, I just want, I, she kept offering it, but I just wanted to show you that she knows it on command. You simply point to the cot. You ask her place, and she goes up on there. If she takes one foot off, if one foot hits the floor, it's uh-uh, take the leash, put her back on. If you go uh-uh and step towards her, which is a typical correction, it's uh-uh, and I step towards her. Um, she normally will self-correct. Now, she's little, so sometimes if she, half her body fell off, her front legs are down, she actually can't just back up. She has to get all the way down before she gets up. So you can help her out with that, Give her the, use the leash, put her back on, a little pop on the leash. Because there's no specific position for her, she doesn't have to sit, she doesn't have to lie down. Usually I'll just give a little pop like that. It's usually a sit type correction. And I re-give the place command. To reinforce place, you can use your hand signal for stay. But place is the command, it's not stay. So I don't recommend using the word stay because she doesn't need that for this, for this thing. Good girl. The cot is nice though. If you're in the kitchen and cooking, you don't want to have her locked in the kennel. Um, and you're able to correct her the moment she gets down, place is a good thing to use. If you're in the living room and you're just watching TV or chatting with friends, she can be on place. She's out of the way, but she's there. If you put it next to you, then she's good about staying right there. Good girl. If you, you can have it across the room, too, that's fine. She knows this. But the moment you move to sit down, the moment you move to stand up, those are times that she's most likely to get up and move, so pay attention to her. If you have her on place and she gets off of place, you have to be able to correct her right away. If you can't, you're too busy cooking, you're too busy in your conversation or whatever you're doing, then put her in the kennel. Kennel is nice because you can latch the door. She cannot break that command until you open that door. So that means you're right there to be able to correct her. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Good job. So her release from place is the same with stay and with kennel. It's okay or come. And if you have the leash, you can tell her, let's go. Kennel. Good. So kennel, it's very similar to place. You tell her kennel, she goes in. I usually point. Good girl. Now, if I'm going to leave her sight, 
I'm going to latch that kennel, but right now I'm staying in her sight. I don't need to latch it. She's not learned to push the door open yet. If she starts doing that, latch it every time. So she, in a way, you trick her thinking the door doesn't open unless you touch it. It doesn't matter if she is. Now, she needs to be calm and quiet in here. If she's been in here for a good long while, she starts getting antsy. She starts maybe whining a little bit. She might need to go potty. You can let her out at that time. That's fine. Bring her out, go potty. Bring her straight back and put her right back in the kennel. She has to be calm and quiet before she's allowed out of the kennel. If she's in here and it's not a potty thing, you just put her in and she starts crying right away. You can hit the top of the crate. It makes a big loud noise. You can shake it like a mini earthquake. That might help stop her. Also, if you're at a distance from her, you can use a water bottle and squirt her with water. That may help her quiet down as well. Once she's calm, she can come out as long as it's a time that you want her to come out. Uh -uh. And then when you open the door, she's not supposed to leave. Good girl. She's not supposed to come out of this kennel unless you say so. Uh -uh. Good girl. So a firmer verbal correction, and she stopped with her nose out of the thing. She's looking for hot dogs on the floor. She's also testing me. She's thinking, how far, how much of my body can I get out ah, 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 before I get corrected? Notice her foot started to come out. I gave her that verbal correction. She stopped right away. Good girl. The only time that you don't practice this is if she needs to go potty. If she needs to go potty, you tell her, okay, as you're opening the door or even before you open the door, put the leash on her and bring her straight out to her potty spot. Otherwise, she needs to wait at the door. She's not allowed to come out unless you say so. Good girl. Okay. Good girl. Good job. Good job. Come here. There you go. There you go. Come here. Place. So if you have any questions, you can email us. We'll get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. And congratulations on your new puppy. Thank you so much.